I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes TV stories you wouldn't have known from the people who were there. Today, I'm bringing you one of my favorite interviews from The Vault. Ron Glass was one of those great character actors who took his work seriously, but not himself. Best known for his role on Barney Miller as Detective Harris, Glass also had notable shot guest shots on shows like The New Twilight Zone and a breakout role on All in the Family. Later, he was a regular on the Joss Whedon cult hit, Firefly. In today's episode, we started out talking about Barney Miller and being about the work. Like Rashomon, Ron had his own point of view about Barney Miller creator Danny Arnold. Ron talks about the two Barney Miller pilots and how he was brought in for the second one, how Rod Perry going to the A-Team left an opening for Ron Glass to come on Barney Miller. The evolution of Detective Harris. We picked up the story of Harris's shooting, Ron's point of view on that episode, which you may have heard when we talked to Hal Linden. You're going to want to hear his side of this story. Plus, he pays tribute to Barney Miller creator Danny Arnold. Now, you'll notice at the beginning of the conversation, Ron seemed to giggle at everything I said. I wasn't quite sure at the time what was going on with him. What he did tell me afterwards was that he started out a little annoyed coming into the interview because we'd been running over on schedule that day and we started a little bit late. But he also told me that by the end of the interview, we had won him over and he did have a great time. So stick with us. You'll see an uncomfortable and awkward start and how by the end I became friends with the late great Ron Glass. So let's talk a little Barney Miller first to get started with. Okay. Remember that show? It's been a while, you know. <laughs> I heard. Um, Hal Linden says it was very, very hard work on that show. There was a lot of people, people, it was a very serious set, but you know, everybody sort of worked very hard on the show. Is that your memory? Was it, what kind of set was it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm going to I'm going to make the assumption that what Hal meant by that was <laughs> that um, that it was it was definitely always about the work, and uh, people were very diligent in terms of uh, you know being true to their characters and trying to make sure that everything that uh, that was written was being flushed out totally. And um, of course, you know, there were always I mean the fact that we sometimes came to work and um, had 10 pages. <laughs> no bragging? <laughs> you could call that hard work <laughs> sometimes, you know. Um, but it also kept it very, very, very interesting. Um, no, we, we, were, we were very serious about, about being funny. So, <laughs> yeah, it was that. Now, the show started out in front of an audience, and then eventually it's like you couldn't keep the audience waiting while you were waiting for script pages to come down? Well, there was that reality. Um, the other reality that I recall is that um, Danny also maintained that he didn't need anybody to tell him what was funny. He already knew what was funny. So he didn't need an audience. To <laughs> he didn't need an audience to let him know where the jokes were. He wrote it. He knew what the jokes were, you know. So uh, there was that aspect as well. Tell me a little bit about your character. Um, this could be quick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, you know, one, <laughs> one of the things that's really, really interesting about my character that, that most people probably don't know is that um, <clears throat> there was a pilot, there were two pilots done, um, and the first one certainly I was not a part of. And um, the, there, there was another black character on the show I don't remember what his name, what the character name was, but the actor's name was Rod Perry. And what happened was, after they did the first pilot, um, Barney Miller was not picked up. And so they were in a, in, a, in a holding pattern. They were waiting. And while they were waiting to find out whether they were going to be picked up or not, Rod got offered another job on a show called The A-Team. And I am eternally grateful to him for the fact that he took that job on the A-Team. And um, so that left an opening, um, which I um, was happy to fill. <laughs> of course, I didn't know that when I, you know, when, when I got the, when I was, uh, you know, <clears throat> audition. When, well, I didn't actually audition, but when I, when I got the job, I, when I took the job, I didn't know that. Um, but, you know, initially, one got the sense that Harris was just kind of a black guy. 
who was in the room. And um, fortunately, you know, our writers and, 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 and producer, I mean, Danny, and, and, and the writers, I mean, they were so bright and so sensitive and so alert and so um, just on top of their games that um, they started to perceive certain things about that black character who was, that black actor who was on the show. <laughs> and they started to pick up their cues. <laughs> So actually, we ended up with a really, um, a really, really, totally well-rounded, totally wonderful character to play, but it didn't necessarily start out that way. Helen did tell me a phenomenal story about Harris's character, about uh, an episode in which Harris accidentally gets shot by another cop while he's in plain clothes, and what subsequently happened both on the show and the story and also on the set. Could you sort of relay your, your memory of that particular incident? I'm sure Hal has covered it. <laughs> it's actually, it's great because it's one of Hal's favorite stories. <laughs> and is it true? Yes, it is. Okay. It is true. Um, well, as I recall, I mean, what happened was that <clears throat> I don't remember exactly what the lines were, but I got shot. I was, um, I was undercover, and so the white cop who shot me assumed that because I was black that I was the perpetrator. And that realization made me, Harris and me, furious. So as they were, it was one of those times when they were trying to they were trying to write out and finish the, you know, wrap up the story. And so there, there was this great controversy about how to end it. And the writers and Danny were of the opinion that, um, that Harris needed to, because I was walking around, Harris had a lot of attitude and, and was really pissed off at everybody in the, in, in the, in the, in the squad room. And Danny's position was that <coughs> in order to resolve the situation, Harris needed to apologize to the guys in the room. And me personally, that just infuriated me. And I felt like it was, um, I felt like it was a, <clears throat> it was a denial and a cop out, not only for the character, but I also felt like it betrayed all of the honesty and all of the wonderful exchange that had existed amongst all of us, including not only the, 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 the actors in the room, but the writers and the producers and everybody, I felt like it was just a betrayal. And, and um, I, <clears throat> as often happens with me, uh, when I get really emotional, it's very, <laughs> it's very difficult for me to uh, kind of say what I mean, <laughs> because I have a really filthy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it becomes like, re and the frustration, you know, so in, in any event, what, what actually ended up happening was I actually said, I don't know, something like, um, I, 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 I don't remember what I said, but whatever I said um, is exactly what we used to wrap it up in the script because it expressed exactly how I felt. Um, and at that, at that moment, it was difficult. There was, there was very little separation between how I felt as an actor and how the character felt in that situation. So it was quite poignant, actually, um, to go through and to recall for that matter. <laughs> I'm glad I could do that for you. <laughs> what struck me about the story was that it sort of personifies the, the, the sensitivity that Danny Arnold and your fellow actors had towards the material and had towards the situation. That it was, you know, most of comes were very pat endings. Okay, we're going to end this and okay, everybody lives happily ever after until next week when it's a whole new thing. You know, it's kind of something that can't be resolved in half an hour and the fact that they took the time to listen to you in the midst of shooting this, um, I mean, that, that, that I think, 
probably speaks volumes for the whole for the whole show itself, don't you think? In many ways, I think I just said that. I think I just said that too. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that to you to reflect to you that I understood exactly what you were saying. I'm glad you got it. I got it. Well, let me see if I can say it again. Because, you, you know, really, because that is the truth. Had that not happened, it would have belied everything that we had done up to that point, and it would have made it very, very difficult for me and for the character, I think, to really breathe easily in that room in the into the future. So yeah, I mean, it, the, it was an extraordinary group of guys and headed by somebody who will never be replaced. Never, ever, ever be replaced. He was, he was, he was just um, magnificent, magnificent guy. Danny. That's, that's, that's what everyone <laughs> that's it for now wrong glass next time talks more about barney uh, miller creator danny arnold about the death <clears throat> of jack sue and how the real wrong glass was incorporated into the character of detective harris how he felt about working till two three four o'clock in the morning on barney miller how co-star Ron Carey was the class clown on the set, and a great story about Abe Vigoda. Till then, why not get your name on Pop Goes the Culture by becoming a Patreon subscriber? Every subscriber will be name-checked on at least one Pop Goes the Culture episode. It's a great way to let people think you're famous and keep us on the air. Plus, what was your favorite Ron Glass episode of Barney Miller? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.